Just off the shores of Lake Erie, we are at First Energy Stadium in a city aptly named after its founder, Moses Cleveland, way back in 1796. This was the scene a few minutes ago. The dog pound in full roar as their Browns emerge from their tunnel. And they're ready to go as they get set to match up with the Chicago Bears. It's the first weekend of autumn and the NFL is in full swing as off we go on EA Sports. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. And he is out of bounds as they'll start up past the 30. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. And he'll get this one up. To about the 39 here. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Here's Fields. And this is caught. It's Jimmy Graham. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. And CD, defensively, you're going against a hot quarterback coming off a three touchdown game of their victory a week ago. But what's the big key for them to try to slow him down? You ask all the tough questions, don't you, partner? Because with this guy, if you blitz him, he takes advantage of that man coverage and burns you. But if you bring on those extra DBs, he sits back there and does what he wants. To me, it's going to be those DBs. When they catch the ball, big-time tackles really put it on those receivers. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Here's Fields. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Allen Robinson, the intended receiver. And it'll bring up third down. One thing that you're going to see from this offense is that they love the matchup with their wide receivers against this secondary. That one wasn't successful. But don't expect them to back away from attacking all game long. And now here's a deep shot that's complete. And he'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. That's a first down with a cherry on top, 31 yards. <laughs> Throwing again is Fields. Flush to his right. And he wisely will throw that one away. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. On second down, it's Montgomery. And nowhere for him to go again. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Officially nothing on that one. No gain, so they're left with still 10 to go on third down. Fields now to throw. Trying to get it to Robinson, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Denzel Ward. That pick hurts a little extra, because it was third down. You were already in field goal range. You know what he's going to hear all night, all next week? Situational football. Understand what's going on, because you expressed it perfectly. Three points were in their hip pocket. They had those. Now, those went by the wayside. You cannot make those kind of mistakes. It's what you call a rookie mistake. 44, 44, Mike, 44. 44. 44. 44. 44. 44. Following the interception, Mayfield dumps this to his running back, Chubb. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it can turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Coming up on a second and six. Play action now. Here's Mayfield. He completes it to Beckham. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. On out Beckham. His second touchdown on the season. And the Browns.
Bills on just two plays have taken the lead. If you didn't know it, it won't surprise you to find out that this team leads the league in scoring. They've been a quick strike team all season long. There's another example. They did it again. This offensive coordinator, right now you can write his ticket towards being a head coach. He's advanced in the ways of offense. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result had he opted for the touchback. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And, of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. So the big play has them all the way down to the 30 now for first and 10. Now Fields. This one swung out to Montgomery. Flexing his muscle again. And they move this all the way down to the nine. The end result, 21 yards. Boy, how about the speed with which this offense can get down the field? It's taking them no time at all to get down here. And now they're set up for the first and goal. From the gun, here's Fields. Buying time to his left. And he takes this down to about the two before going out of bounds. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Well, he did a nice job keeping his eyes downfield, waiting for someone to get open. But once the pressure forced his eyes down to see the rush, it was time to make a break for it. Good yardage on first down. Now can they punch it in on second and goal? Montgomery. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Bears. David Montgomery, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Bears are an extra point away from tying the football game. Santos able to tack on the extra point. And that will tie our score here in this opening quarter of play. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And he can't field it cleanly. It's loose. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. The Browns drive about to get started. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You didn't go away from what you did before because that worked. But you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. On first down, Chubb going to get forward for only about a couple. Second and eight, fourth coming. Well, they always talk about playing great team defense, and that was an excellent example right there. Everyone on assignment, no one in the wrong spot, everyone filling their gaps. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb, and he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. It's a gain of six, moves him to a manageable third and two situation. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. He was only asked to punt once in the victory last week as he sends this one away. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt, and the Bears take over. Now we'll get our first update of the afternoon for the Meadowlands. And the Falcons have opened up the lead there to a couple of scores. 
At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown. Now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there, handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. On first down, it's Fields. And he's got the speedster Goodwin. And finally out of bounds inside the five at the four. Well, make that now two completions for him on this drive, and these aren't ordinary completions. They're big ones. Yeah, and these are the types that make a secondary talk to each other and not in a good way, oftentimes pointing fingers. Hey, who's got him? Someone cover it. That type of indecision can open up to even more big plays. Now it's Fields. And he's going to go down just outside of the five, right around the six-yard line. Malik McDowell. He's the culprit dropping him for a two-yard loss. The Bears with the football. We get set to begin quarter number two. These two teams all tied after one. Second and goal from the six this time. A give to Montgomery out of the gun. And a minuscule gain of maybe a yard from the six to the five. Not a whole lot there. The defense was ready, it looked, for that run pass option. You get the sense the next time he has that opportunity, he may keep it himself and get to the perimeter. Probably owes his back a little bit of an apology on that one, huh? Now Fields on third and goal. And he's going to be taken down, sacked back around the 18 yard line. Set there by Jadevian Clowney. Well, last game he had two sacks. Got another one here, picked up right where he left off. Brandon, he spent the entire offseason working on new moves, new techniques, trying to add to his arsenal of pass rush moves. Certainly paying dividends of what we've seen so far. So a good kick there. They put the bow tie on it with three points. And let's face it, everybody wants a touchdown. We know that. But in the NFL, defenses are awfully good. You're not going to score each and every time. But be able to knock the ball through the post and take the throw. By the way, I said bow tie. I meant just bow. Either not the, way. Not the tie, but yeah. Either way. You got it. I just went right past it. The Cleveland offense ready to go and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. A first carry now for Kareem Hunt. And he'll wind up with about six up past the 30 to the 31. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Mayfield looks to throw. Caught left side, it's Beckham. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. First down, Cleveland Mayfield to Beckham. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed, picking up the first. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. They find some open field here. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That goes for a gain of 31. They're good at running the screen. Sometimes it's probably taken for granted, though. You need a good deal of deception in there, don't you? You certainly do. And you know what else you need? The people who aren't involved in the deception to make sure they hold their blocks and someone doesn't flash too quickly in the face of the quarterback. Toward the back corner of the end zone, but he could not get the feet down. This will wind up incomplete. Keelan Cole, the intended target. That'll bring up second down. Throwing Mayfield. 
And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds, incomplete. Anthony Schwartz, the intended target, and it's third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the drive in order to finish this one off. And it'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. And his kick here is good. And that will knot us up at 10. So chalk that down as an eight-play drive capped with a field goal. Yeah, as a friend of mine used to say, they were moving and grooving for a while, but they couldn't keep the momentum going enough to get a touchdown out of it. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And this return will net positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. And at least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. Now, nowhere for Fields to turn, and down he goes. Jadavian Clowney able to record his fifth sack of the season. But they tried to go with a little play action there, but nobody on the defensive side bit. Yeah, they adjusted in time and in a big way and ultimately got the sack on offense. Sometimes you're running play action just to set up a certain blocking technique. In this case, none of it worked. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Another try after the first down sack. Fields. It's caught outright by Graham. That's a good bounce back play right there after taking a sack on first down. Didn't quite get it to the marker, but now they're in a much better spot for a third and short yardage call. If you're the offensive coordinator, you like looking at that section a heck of a lot better than trying to figure out third and long. One play action, Fields. And this will be caught by Mooney. And he will have the Bears first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 14 yards through the air. Caught the D off guard on third and one. Now a first down throw. Fields. And this is incomplete. To this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. Here's second and ten. Again, Fields. Oh, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Denzel Ward. And he's going to take this one back to the 37-yard line. Second interception for him now here in this first half. And you got to think he's a rookie, Charles. How much does confidence start to become a factor? I think that's a great question because that's what they're going to check on when he gets to the sidelines. The coach is going to check on it. His teammates are going to check on it because when you haven't done it before, it's not something that's part of you. You got to see how you're going to react. Let's see how he bounces back. Yeah, because two interceptions for him in college and a half. I mean, that just didn't happen. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. They'll go left side on the ground with Chubb. And he's going to take this one up only to about the 44-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third and three. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. The Bears bring out an extra defender in the secondary now for third down. Here's Mayfield. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Alec Ogletree. They are in an interception mood on defense. Had two nice interceptions a week ago. Now two here in the first half. Yeah, we call it ball hawking. And the only way to truly be good ball hawks is not guessing. 
is not just simply anticipation. It's study and understanding what they like to do and beating them to the spot and creating big plays. Well, they're watching the film, and it's working. First down, here's the run with Montgomery. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. To throw his fields. And he slings one that's incomplete. The intended receiver, Marquise Goodwin, third down here. The turnover put him in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else he did? You make your defense mad. Yeah. He got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. You got to cash in and get some points. Throwing on third down, Fields. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. John Johnson with the INT. And the return here is stopped at the 35-yard line. Certainly not what he was hoping for, Charles. That's now three interceptions in this ballgame. But there's a lot of knowledge to be gleaned every time you throw an interception if you do things the right way. And hasn't there been a pretty darn good quarterback along the way who threw a lot of interceptions early, learned from them, and became great later? Who would that be? That'd be one Peyton Manning through 28 his rookie year. That's the NFL record. How'd things turn out for him? I think, okay, he's a guy in all the commercials now. Right? <laughs> yeah, I think he's doing okay. A good pick up there, 26 yards. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Now yeah, here's a throw. It's complete. And oh, he coughed it up. And this is picked up by the Bears. And he'll return this ball across midfield to the 47-yard line. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. Try to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Throw left side complete. That's Goodwin. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A very solid gain of 27. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Out to his left. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. Oh, I like that right there. Not only was it the right play, throwing it away like that, frankly, I think it was the only play. Yeah, got outside of the pocket, realized he had nothing, just chucked it free. Yeah, lived to fight another down, right? Play action. Fields. Nowhere to turn this time, and he goes down. Sack back at the 29. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts. As they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in this first half. So now following the sack, Fields and the Bears looking at third down and long. Third and long, they'll look to throw. Eluding the pressure right. And a loose football. And this is picked up by the Browns. And his guys are going to get the football at the 23-yard line. Always costly to cough up that football. These defenders, they become so adept, though, at jarring it free. Yeah, it's amazing that there aren't more fumbles caused because now, if you're an offensive player, you go through ball security drills every single day. It's really not out of line to think you should take the ball to bed with you and just hold on to it. But the bottom line is, no matter how much you try to protect it, these guys are pretty good at finding ways to knock it out. Keelan Cole, the intended target, and it's second down. Well, that was an interesting look there because as soon as he got outside the pocket, I thought he was going to take off and run for yardage. But what often happens now with these quarterbacks who can move, Defenses want to try and keep bodies in front of them, and I think that discouraged him from taking off and made him try a pass downfield that fell incomplete. He'll let it go deep for Beckham. And got his man complete. And all the way in. 
Touchdown, Cleveland. Odell Beckham in the final seconds of the first half. And the Browns are able to strike quickly for six. So they're able to break the tie just before halftime. Now they just don't want anything crazy to happen on the ensuing kickoff. Yeah, they want to just add the extra point, get the kickoff taken care of, and get to the locker room with the lead that they fought so hard to get. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. An incredibly short kick fielded way up there. Oh, a good return up past the 30. So we have reached halftime here in Cleveland with the Browns on top as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. The Browns are going to get the second half kickoff and they've got this lead as well as we are back and underway. And this is going to be returned from the middle of the end zone. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line. So bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision. Loses him about four yards. The Browns drive about to get started. And Charles, they've got the lead. I would imagine the overall halftime tone was a positive one. But what do you think the talking points were in the locker room? Well, there were three talking points at the half, partner. All of them were about turnovers because they were pretty loose with the ball. Otherwise, this lead could be even bigger. Now, I don't think that they overly harped on it, but I think they told them, guys, if you want to keep calling those plays that are exciting, you've got to take care of the ball. Otherwise, we may have to dial things back a little bit. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Nick Chubb saw his role kind of diminish in the passing game last year. His receptions went down from 36 to just 16. But let's be fair about this. He missed some time with a knee injury. And he also had Kareem Hunt in the backfield, who absorbed a lot of catches along the way. He's more than capable of adding to their passing. Now Mayfield lost the football. A lot of bad news on that play for them, wasn't there? Lost the football, lost a lot of yardage. But I think the good news outweighs it. Able to retain possession. That was big for them. So they keep the ball, but work to do on second and long. To throw Mayfield. They set up the screen to Chubb. And he's going to lose yardage here back to the 14-yard line. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. Well, that play really didn't fool them. They completed the screen pass. But for lost yardage, a really nice play by the defense. Need something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. He'll let it go deep for Beckham. Into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Eddie Jackson picks it. And he's able to take this one back to the 36-yard line. That is just what this defense was hoping for, an interception on the opening possession of this third quarter. Obviously didn't want to surrender a touchdown and fall even farther behind, and we've gotten to know this team a little bit, haven't we? Couldn't you just see their defensive leaders telling the offensive guys telling them to start things off? You take it from there. On first and ten, here's Fields. And nearly another interception. Well, it would have been his third of the game, but this time he couldn't hang on. But defensively, you're over there trying to catch your breath and try not to show the offense that you're a little bit fatigued. You're right back out there after the turnover. Now they've got to work towards getting another couple of stops and forcing them into at least a long field goal situation. Second and ten. the gun fields uh, nowhere for fields to turn and down he goes in for the sack Myers Garrett this defense they just continue to feast five sacks now as a unit it's been quite an afternoon getting to the quarterback and we're seeing it come from a variety of places as well sometimes just the guys up front getting to them other times you add extra guys rushing the quarterback twist this is caught inside the 
line. The defense shaking their heads. Not aggressive enough, and they allow him to convert a third and 18. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here, this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. And when you've thrown as many interceptions as he has in this one, you definitely start getting a little hesitant to throw the ball out wide because that's prime pick six territory. That time, he made sure the only guy who was going to catch it was sitting in the third row. To throw once more on second and ten. Fields. Escaping the pressure right. Flushed out right. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. It's just a gain of a couple there on the scramble, and now it's third down. Now how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. On third down, they go Montgomery. And he is in. Touchdown, Chicago. David Montgomery, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bears are an extra point away from tying the football game. Santos with the extra point, and that will tie our game here in the third. Nothing separating these two teams on the scoreboard as the kick's away here. And here comes a return from the middle of the end zone. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. The Cleveland offense ready to go. The interception on the last drive proved costly, led to the tying score, so 17 all as they come up on a first down. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. Defensively, we always know that he is tough at run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. Play fake. Mayfield swings this out for Hunt. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. At that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? On first down, they'll run with Chubb. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he'll take it into the end zone for a grand touchdown. Nick Chubb, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Browns have moved out in front. Well, I guess when you look back on it, it was just a matter of time until he popped a big one like that. And, you know, at halftime, you and I discussed it. They had done a nice job on him in the first half. But there were a couple of occasions where it felt like he might wiggle out of traffic and take it to the house. Finally here in the second half, that got done. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Jimmy Graham, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Fields. Flush to his right. And Graham's got it. Complete. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. It's a pickup of 10 and a Bears first down. And that's a nice throw right there. And I'll tell you what I've seen in recent times and actually watched a presentation in the offseason. 
from a college offensive coordinator that showed about 10 different drills that he runs with his quarterbacks to show them how to get out of the pocket, how to get comfortable when they're doing so, and to make plays under that type of duress. That's an example of what we're seeing the colleges deliver to the NFL. On first down, Fields. Deep ball for Goodwin. And this one is incomplete. But we saw that he had a lot of success last week throwing the football, but that hasn't translated to this week. But with his team behind, I don't expect him to back off. I expect him to keep firing. Fields throwing again. Uh, nowhere for Fields to turn, and down he goes. Jadevi and Clowney in there to get him, and that is sack number six now for him on the year. So now following the sack, Fields and the Bears looking at third down and long. Play action. It's Fields. And he'll just toss it away. So He's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. Oh, it's a wobbler here. And this will be down just on the other side of midfield. Brown's drive about to get started. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good. So they'll be hoping to do that once more. And it takes me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense and they exploited them the last time out. Let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive. And we'll see if they can do just that. A run for Nick Chubb. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Big Eddie Goldman there on the tackle. And now we've got flags down. Looked like one of the Browns might have moved. A false start penalty, and now they're back to needing 10 yards on second down. Chubb will get the call, running left. And he is out of bounds, looks like right at the 15. 138 yards for him on the ground now, as he has been terrific here this afternoon. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive, not much since. Mayfield gives this one to Hunt, and they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. And here's a big one now. Try to hold this lead. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. They'll run for it. Chubb. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. I think we're seeing the effect that runs like that are starting to have on this game. They're a little bit slower. That front seven reacting to the football, almost like body blows in boxing. Slowing them down, and they're really starting to take over in this game. They'll run with Chubb. And he's going to battle his way down right around the two-yard line. 
A gain of four last play. They double that here and get eight. Chubb. And he pushes forward but comes up short of the goal line as he'll get a yard down to about the one. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. They'll give it to Chubb. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Nick Chubb with his second TD of the game, his sixth on the year. And the Browns are closing in on a third straight victory to start the campaign. Extra point by McLaughlin is up and good. And the lead now up to 14. The Browns kicking team out there now as they'll send this one away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Fields on first down. This one hauled in, and again, it's Robinson. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Back to throw, Fields. This one swung out to Williams. It'll be a gain of six, and that'll bring up second down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just let him bleed the game out that way. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 24-yard line. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. A play fake, now Fields to throw. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense, first and ten. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And the Bears are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. Ten more there and another first down. They'll run for it with Montgomery. And he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. There's no question that coming into this game, this defense was pretty vocal about his desire to take this running back out of his game, and all that pregame whooping has turned into results. Back at the two now, here's second and goal. Once more, Montgomery, and he takes this one in for a Bears touchdown. David Montgomery taking it in from two yards out, and the Bears have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Santos able to tack on the extra point, and now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Now after the touchdown, here's Santos to kick this one away. Well, from deep in the end zone, he's going to bring this out. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. 
The Cleveland offense ready to go. After the touchdown we just saw, we have a brand new ball game. And now look at the situation. You've got plenty of time on the clock. Defensively, they have three timeouts. So do you run the football here or do you throw it? I think you have that full conversation with your offensive unit. And you tell them, here's the situation. They've got all their timeouts, so we are not going to play this conservatively. We've got to attack them. We've got to make them use those, gain the ground that we need in order to put this game away. If you think we're just going to run it three times and punt it, you've got another thing coming. Yeah, I and mean, by the way, also the two-minute warning in place, so essentially four timeouts left. They have to be aggressive here. They'll try and wind down some clock with Chum. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it's going to make it third down at six. And this is an absolutely big third down that's been set up here, partner, and there's no other way to put it. The defense has to get a stop here if they have any hopes of winning this game. Pastor, you said big third down. I'd put the word big in capital letters here. Got an open man. That's David Njoku, the tight end. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. This offense converted once on fourth down earlier. Now they're out there again to try once more. Mayfield keeps it himself. And this will depend on the mark. I'm not sure he pushed the line forward. And indeed he did not. They stop him. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Back to throw. Robinson's got it. And down to the 20 he'll go before heading out of bounds. Mark that down as a pickup of 13, and the Bears have the first. That's what they need right now. Get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. but that's all. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. They'll look to throw. Throw left side caught by Goodwood. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Gosh, given the time and the short game, would he have been better off just dropping that? Yeah, when you look at the clock, you think so. But it's hard to get a receiver to drop a football. They're trained to catch everything. And for the Browns, a nickel set here on third down. He'll look to throw. They'll roll him out right. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline. But out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Down seven, and they've got to go for it here on fourth down. They snap it to Fields. Sliding out of the pocket. And it's caught. It's a touchdown. So they rally here in the final minute, and they're an extra point away from tying this game. Coaches must really like to see that from the quarterback because he's had the interceptions in this game, but they're able to connect on the touchdown pass. And teammates love to see that because they know that they miss blocks during a game, but they come back and make them later on. They miss tackles, right? They miss making plays, but the spotlight is magnified on your quarterback. And when he stands up to the pressure and comes back and throws a touchdown pass after throwing some picks earlier, they feel great about that guy. And likewise for him personally, as a rookie quarterback, has to give him more confidence. The Browns drive about to get started. They've got work to do, but they do still have a bit of time here. And they've got to feel comfortable with that, but they have all their play sequences called. If they get out of bounds, that allows them to hold and call another play, but if they don't, 
It's hurry up to the line of scrimmage and either spike it and stop the clock or continue to move it downfield in order to try and get in range and win this game. See if they can do just that. Here's Baker. And yeah, that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Force the ball free and it's second down. Line of scrimmage again the 37 as they line up second and 10. Mayfield to throw. That's to the right side and complete to Najoku. Now the Bears going to call the first of their timeouts. As the clock stops here with 46 seconds left to play. Field. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Well, the defense certainly did its job. They held up in that situation, and now fourth down, you've got to punt this and try to get to overtime. There's no decision to be made, in my estimation. And here's Gillen on now to punt as he gets this one away. And no return on this one as that kicks out of bounds, so they'll start just outside of their own 30-yard line. At the line, prepping for their next drive, the Bears offense. They need to get this around the 40 to have a chance to win it in regulation. From the 40, it's a 57-yard field goal, so that gives you a gauge. And all they're trying to do now is pick up yardage in good chunks and get out of bounds to stop the clock. If they end up running a play and get tackled in bounds, they're worried the clock may run out on them and finish the game. And they'll have to be careful how they handle this. Run with me, partner. Take a deep breath, because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle. Kind of scan the crowd, see if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. Throwing again on second and ten. Fields. This is Robinson, and he will stop the clock as he gets to the sideline after a gain of about ten. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. Now to throw. And he fires one, but incomplete. So he's unable to complete it there. And just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark really start to finish. It makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here? Or is he just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. thing on fourth down here's fields and that's caught by Williams and they will get the conversion on fourth down to stay alive but time not an ally they only got a couple but a couple's all that they needed as they convert on fourth First down, it's Fields. Man open, it's Goodwin. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. And we've seen him have success earlier on with the ball in his hands because he is a get it in space and make a play kind of a receiver. But that time, they closed on him quickly and held him to a short gain.
Throwing again is Fields. And that is incomplete. Stopping the clock with five seconds to go. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his huddle. Got to totally command it, make sure all eyes are on him. All focus is locked in. Got to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. They'll fake the handoff. Now Fields. Uh, nowhere for Fields to turn, and down he goes. It's a little teaching moment here. Overtime rules. Remind us how this goes, partner. Okay, so in the past, we had sudden death. First team to score wins, but no longer. Now, if the team receives the ball, scores a touchdown, they win the game. If they kick a field goal, though, or don't score, the other team gets a possession. And after both teams get a possession, then we're into sudden death. First team to score wins the game. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. The Bears offense ready to go for their next drive. Except for their first drive here in overtime. And this is where the crowd can really become a factor. They've had to battle it all day, but I know what you're saying. In overtime, that gets double, doesn't it? At least, because now the crowd really wants to be involved and help their team. And he's into the end zone for the touchdown and the game winner in OT. Well, you never know what you're going to expect when you come to the stadium to call a game. Sometimes you get good ones. Sometimes you get bad ones. Sometimes you get great ones. And that's what we had here. What an exciting finish on that last big play. And I think that as we look at it, when you're talking about a great...
and now we get a peek at some of the top players here for this Madden Ultimate Team matchup. Brandon Gauden, Charles Davis ready to go in the booth. We hope you're ready to go at the controls. Let's play. Mason Crosby set to do the honors here. And we are underway from Cincinnati. This taken in at the goal line. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. on first down. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out of boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. From the gun, it's Wilson. They'll drop this one off with ETN. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Now it's Wilson. Now into a sea of defenders and intercepted. Picked off at about the 31. And he will bring this back. It's a pick six in a touchdown well, it was third down defensively they were just hoping to make a play and get off the field get their offense on instead they did one better pick it off take it into the end zone well they did what you said they got they off did the get field off. they're gonna have to come right back on they're gonna come right back on but happily right they put the ball in the end zone that's the way you start a game that's the way you set the tone and he will get in to make it eight nothing tell you what they're not messing around you get the quick touchdown and then you go for two to go up eight nothing here on the road in a sense they hit him with a big shot right away you don't throw a jab after you throw the haymaker right go ahead and go for two they did they're in control So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. On the return, it's Taylor. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. The Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive. Back to the air, Wilson after the pick six. Eluding the pressure right. That's complete to Calvin Johnson. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive. 12 yards. From the shotgun, Wilson. Escaping the pressure right. Again, it's Johnson. Still fighting for more. They'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. We talk about mobility on quarterbacks all the time. Here's where it really pays off. Able to move, evade, and is accurate throwing on the run and picking up a first down. On first and ten, it's Wilson. Flushed out right. That's into a crowd and intercepted. Picked off near the 26. And his guys are going to get the football at the 28-yard line. 
Well, young quarterback Charles rolling to his right. I know he's right-handed, but is that one that maybe a veteran sticks in his pocket? I think so, but you have to remember with young quarterbacks, it may take a few years before they get all the stuff out of them that they did earlier in their career or even in their college days when they were used to being dominant. In this case, the NFL veteran defense ended up winning the battle. And they're going to have this way down in Cincinnati territory. 63 yards rushing for him as he's got the afternoon off to a great start. Well, that didn't take long. One play, and we're already looking at a first and goal situation. He didn't seem in a rush. I guess they just didn't know where the play clock was. I think you're right about that because there was no hurried movements there, right? No up-tempo at all. Clock just ran out. I think he was as surprised as maybe his bench was. The delay of game, a costly one, as they're backed up five for first and goal. Now a handoff here to his running back. And that'll hurt the average a bit as this time they're able to get him behind the line. It's a loss of four on the first down play. A tale of two extremes. First carry, he went for a bundle. His second goes backward. And how many times have we seen that happen? Because you get that big carry, and you come back and you're all fired up, and sometimes you force a run a little bit, right? Trying to break off that big carry again, and instead it works opposite. And they'll try the jet sweep here. And they'll lose yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. Just a one-yard loss that time, but that's not what they needed. Now they're dealing with a third and long. Now a play fake, and it's Newton. Wrapped up, taken down, back at the 25. Jake Youngblood. He's the culprit, causes a loss of five, and it brings up fourth down. And he'll try and throw here on the fake. And all the gamble fails. It's incomplete. They pass up the three, fake it. It doesn't work. And the Bengals will get the football back. The Bengals drive about to get going. And two picks thrown here in this first half alone. We'll see how that affects him. Can't wait to see where his confidence is because the great ones, they'll throw four or five picks, and while it'll hurt their team, it won't hurt their confidence. They'll think something was just wrong with the ball or the wind <laughs> or something was funny. It's never about them. That's how they stay so into the moment and into the game. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. Nice little nifty play for him there. Yeah, that's the ability to read a defense and utilize players that don't often get picked up in coverage easily. And I'm talking about being able to use the backs out of the back field because I know that when I used to cover hey we got everybody cut oh he just stuck out there and they just got a nice first down there what do we love to say get those backs into space right they were able to do that there nice pickup on first down they'll throw on first down with Wilson pressure comes and Wilson's gonna go down Von Miller doing what he does best with a sack. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Another try after the first down sack. Wilson, out left, he's got it to Everett. And he will finally go out of bounds, but not before he takes it down to the 25. A big change in field position there. That's 40 yards on the catch and run. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. From the shotgun again to Elliott. He's able to work free for about six down to the 18. 
That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you take runs like that each and every time, won't you? And just a couple yards there down to the 17. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? And this is going to be intercepted. Picked off by Justin Simmons. And a short return will be stopped inside the 10 at the 8-yard line. So his struggle is just continuing here in the first half, throwing the football, Charles. Now three interceptions. And they don't feel like they're just great plays by the defense. There's a sense that maybe he's a little careless with the football now. So some of the great coaches in the past, you know, they've always said, I can't teach you, obviously, because you're not listening. So maybe the bench can teach you. He's got to be careful now. He might get pulled. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. They fake the give. Newton. The bagel pressure gets him that time. Down he goes. Jack Youngblood able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Second and 11 now. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman. He's in Orlando, and he'll have our EA Sports halftime report. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. 73 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here in this first half. From the 50, Newton. It's complete. He finds Falk here. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 22 yards on the catch and run, a first down. So many times in my career I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing, but as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. Now a first down throw for Newton. into a sea of bodies and it's intercepted picked up by the Hall of Famer Junior Sam and the return goes up to his own 17 yard line the Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive as they'll take over with just under a minute left to play until the break and mark him down way up close to the 40 at the 39 now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. From up near the 40 now after the big play to start, here's another first and 10. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. Being chased out left. He'll get just a yard on the scramble in second down. Now another timeout called for by the offense as the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Second and nine. Play action. Now Wilson. Now he'll let it go deep right side. And this is caught right along the sideline. What a job of keeping the toes in bounds there. And that might be exactly what they needed to wake up this home crowd. They haven't given them much to cheer for so far. And never underestimate the effect the home crowd with you can have on a game. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Brian Dawkins. 
Finds the safety for the pick. And the return goes up to his own 17-yard line. Well, you just kind of feel for him right now. Four interceptions, and you can almost see through his face mask. There's a lot going on in between the ears. There certainly is, and probably way too much, because now he's probably doubting himself a little bit, wondering what adjustments he has to make. But here's what he needs to do. Get through this game, go to the press conference, meet it head on, and show your teammates you're ready to shoulder what happened today and you'll be ready for the next game. And if he can do that as a rookie, that's a great sign of maturity. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Newton to throw. He's going to look downfield for Henry. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Jalen Ramsey. And his guys have got it back at the closing stages of the first half. Well, Charles, you know, so close to halftime there. You throw the interception. Not only that, you do give it to them in plus territory as well. Yeah, they were pushing real hard to try and get something more on the board on their side of the ledger right before the half. Looking at it with 20-20 hindsight, though, might have been better to hand it off a few times, hoping to get something to break instead of putting the ball in the air. Pressure comes, and Wilson's going to go down. And with just one second remaining in the first half, they'll call the timeout. Final play of the half, it's Wilson. He's going to air one out. This is caught inside the 15. And he's in for the touchdown on the final play of the first half. The prayer is answered. How did they get that done? He put quite a bit of air underneath that touchdown pass. Of course, we knew that he had the strong arm. That part was easy. You could see that throughout his college career. But what you want to know about a rookie is when the pressure's on, can you throw with touch? He just did right there. And boy, it was pretty. To throw is Wilson. A final shot before break. And he's got it. So they get the two-point conversion. And with that, this game suddenly tied as we reach the end of the first half. First half in the books. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we welcome you back live now inside the booth alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, set and ready to rock for the third quarter. All even through one half of football as we get back underway in quarter number three. Taken in at the three. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. set at the line for this next drive. It's a tie football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tie game. No need to panic. No need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. Here's Newton. Steps away to his left. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. So, Charles, tie game here. What are your keys as we continue to play this second half? I know people think it's always trite when you say the same things over and over, but they're tried and true in the game of football. Who's going to block better? Who's going to tackle better? In this case, to me, it's turnovers. You've got to take care of the football in order to win the game. Third quarter, all tied up. This is second and ten. Throwing is Newton. 
And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, and it's going to lead to third down. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides. And there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. Off play action, Newton. And that is incomplete. Jalen Ramsey right there in coverage to knock it away. So many times we talk about coverage, we're just talking about a defender running with a receiver, but a big part of it is understanding where the football is, finding it. In this case, when it arrived, it wasn't a surprise, and he was able to bat it away. A cook now on to punt as he gets this one away. Seven yards on the return after a punt of 39. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. The Bengals' drive about to get going. Their defense has done the job. Now it's the offense's turn as they've got it first and 10. Here's Wilson. Flush to his right. The ball comes out. Charles, you'd have to think a pretty avoidable mistake. You're exactly right about that, partner, because it all comes down to covering up the football. Look, turnovers are going to happen. They're inevitable. But in a tie game in the third quarter, those turnovers can change the tide of the ball game. And now it's up to their defense to try and bail them out. Got to take care of the rock. And he'll take it from the 18 to the 15, a gain of three. Jamal Adams coming up from his safety spot to make the play. Second and six. No, scratch that. Second and seven. And now whistles and a flag. And I think we got a jump here. Jumping all the way from the outside, maybe getting a little early start in the corner blitz. And the only time it makes sense to get that penalty is exactly as you described. Otherwise, he should never get that penalty. Second and two now. The penalty leaves him in pretty good shape. And look at this. Cam Newton intercepted a third time. Picked up by the Hall of Famer Junior Seau. Pass the 10 to the 11-yard line, and that's where the return stops. Now a first and 10 at the 11. After the interception, here's Wilson. And he's going to be taken down. Sacked back at the 2. Jack Youngblood picks up his second sack of the afternoon. That's his second sack of the game in the best defensive ends. They do their homework as much as offensive guys do. They know how to beat the offensive lineman across from them, what moves they need to do to set them up. This guy's been pretty good at it all game long. And my goodness, another interception. Picked off by Kyle Fuller. And he will bring this back. It's a pick six and a Raven touchdown. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. Second and 14. Wilson. He sets to fire deep. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. Running out of the gun with ETN. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Now a second down and six. Yeah. <laughs> 
To throw is Wilson. Dancing to his left. And his throw is incomplete. He was trying to get it to Ezekiel Elliott. And now it's third down. Well, he certainly did a nice job improvising there, extending the play, hoping someone would come open downfield. But they never did. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Now it's Wilson. Escaping the pressure right. And find Everett there, complete. The completion there winds up a wash, and it'll bring up fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. Fourth down. Here's Wilson. He throws, and this is going to be incomplete. Boy, a curious decision to go for it. Doesn't pan out, and the Ravens get the football back and in great shape. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. A great effort there. 26 yards. And the Ravens have taken the lead. So that pretty conclusively, I might add, shows you the perils of going for it and not making it on fourth down. One play, touchdown. Yeah, and I've got to put this on the man in charge, the head coach. He made the decision to go for it. To me, when punting was the only decision to make, and it backfired on him in a big way. here just past the 20 yard line the Cincy offense about ready to go here on their next drive and last time out went for it on fourth down turned it over gave him great field position turned into six points so they've got to recover here Charles it's amazing what one decision can do in the chain of events right the decision to go for it on fourth down caused all of that it caused every bit of it but it showed confidence hey I've got confidence in you guys go pick it up for them didn't happen also showed confidence in the defense. They didn't pick up their end of the bargain. So now they've got to come back out and start over and rebuild that confidence. Trying to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Second and ten. It's Wilson again. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Gerald Everett is tied in, the intended receiver. And it's third down. Another attempt, another incompletion. And when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long gain or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points. And the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. And he's going to lose yardage here. As they will switch ends as time has run out on this third quarter of play. Wilson on fourth down. Flushed out right. Now on the run. He'll throw it back deep over the middle. And now here is another interception. Picked off by Justin Simmons. And some room to roam now. Defensively that time, they were in zone coverage. As a rookie QB, what lesson can you learn there? Well, understand this. You saw zone in college, and the defensive backs reacted but they don't react like they do on this level. So when they're in zone and they see the ball coming to them, they'll react at least a half a second faster. You've got to know where you want to go with the ball and be decisive with it. Otherwise, the end result could be something you don't like. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Thank <laughs> you. 
They're going to run the sweep. It's Samuel. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And all the way in for a Ravens touchdown. Debo Samuel, 30 yards. And the Ravens are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Now the Bengals are going to use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Now Crosby for the point after. And the lead is up to 14. Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. On the return, it's Taylor. And he's only going to make it to the 13-yard line and no further. In this position, trying to get back into the game, teams are looking for a spark from their special teams. That's not what they got, though. They got a setback, and they have a long field to cover if they want to try and put points on the board. The Bengals drive about to get going. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> Offense take care of the defense. Deep